Zell Boy Army, welcome to another video. We are three days away from the release of FIFA 21. EA Play is on the 1st of October. Ultimate Edition, and I can't remember what the other edition's called, but the two special editions go live on the 6th of October, but you can use EA Play 10 hours up until then. And then on the 9th of October, the actual like full game standard edition launches. I will do a video t telling you five things that you need to do during EA Play that might not be able to do afterwards, the best way to make use of your time on EA Play. But this video is dedicated to five things to do when you load up for the first time, things to get going, things that are going to help you out at the start of FIFA 21, or just some things that you might forget about that are worth checking out. This channel is dedicated to helping you guys improve at the game, giving you helpful advice on team building, Gameplay tips, tutorials, formations, tactics. I'll also show you some highlights from my own gameplay throughout the year. Packs when I hit top 100. Hopefully again for the fifth year running. And yeah, just lots more of that type of stuff. So if you enjoy that, please subscribe to the channel. I will be doing daily uploads every day now. FIFA 21 is basically here. I'm really excited. And make sure you check the links in the description below. You can follow my Twitter. You can follow my Twitch. I'll be streaming every day once the game comes out. The first thing that I think it's worth doing when the game comes out, just having a quick look at it, is pressing the right stick in. I think it's still the same. Um, okay, that was from last season. You press the right stick in, and it should take you to the objectives. It's given me all the um, rewards for the previous seasons because I haven't really played FIFA 20 for a couple of months. But yeah, go look at the objectives and see if there's any helpful things in here to start with. So, I mean, a lot of the time it's going to be useless stuff like stadium rooms. I, I like that they've added these. Um, the new custom stadium options, um, okay, it's not a game change, but it's kind of cool, might add to the game a bit. Well, there might be some cool loans in here that might be able to help you out in the first weekend league. Some packs. The packs that you get at the start of the game, other than draft, aren't, to, aren't very good in the store. So you might be able to get a few better packs in here. And especially if you're on a, a Road to Glory account, the level 15 option tends to give you, obviously not going to be as good as this at the start, but the level 15 option will tend to give you something pretty decent that you can work towards early on. Um, and the level 30 might take a while to get going towards anyway. Uh, I didn't realise they'd given Moments R9. I've never even used Moments R9. Probably never will. Um, but yeah. Check out the objectives. I think there's a few new parts to it on FIFA 21. Once the game's actually launched, we're going to do a video talking about five new features that are going to be part of um, FIFA 21 that we've not seen before. If there's any other videos that you guys want me to do for you, anything that you think you need help with, uh, I've got lots of ideas for the channel and videos coming in October, but if there's anything specific, please let me know, and you might give me some ideas to help you guys that I haven't thought of. Um, some of the ideas I'm looking at, once I've got used to the game, I'll start doing tactics, formation videos. We'll do some starter squads. Might show you a few of my pack arms if I get anything good. Show you some drafts, gameplay tips from defending to shooting tutorials. And just looking at some of the meta OP players that you might not have seen before. Um, yep, so the season objectives. Check these out. Because sometimes you can get some quick XP or even some pretty good packs early on that are going to help you out and set you off to a good start when the game comes out. But yeah, objectives, they're pretty useful. I think co-op objectives are going to be a thing there now. Check them out when the game launches, because there might be something that can get you off to a good head start. The second thing you're probably going to want to do is go look at the squad. The menus, again, they're a bit different. I can't show you FIFA 21 stuff. I can't use clips from the beta, because obviously that was prohibited. Once the actual game comes out, I'll start using um, footage from the actual game to show some of the new features. But go look at the squad. I think the menus at the top are going to be slightly different. Get yourself familiar with that. If you get yourself familiar with that at the start, it's going to get you off to a much better start and save you time in the long run. Um, the squad menu, one thing that will be different on the new game is fitness. I'll talk a bit more about how that could impact the game in the new features thing. But no, fitness is going to be nice. But get used to the squad menu. Check it out when you um, start the game and start to try look at some of the formations you want. One of the things that I said that's important to do on the game is to be checking the different formations out, get planning ahead, because if you plan ahead and start to build your team that way, you're going to have a much better start and save yourself a lot of hassle, time, and probably coins, which is important. 
So start working towards that, checking out the squad and getting used to that. Third thing to do is go look at the game modes. So again, the menus I think look very different on the new FIFA, but check out the game modes and look which ones you might want to put time into. Personally, I really don't enjoy playing against the AI. You'll really never see me doing squad battles unless it's an absolute essential because I have to do it to get an icon swap. So I only did one set of the icon swaps last year and it ended up being a waste of time because I got Prime Coleman. Icon swaps actually though could be more relevant this year because we had it announced by EA, their content plans, that icon SBCs are coming back and for some icon SBCs you might need to put an icon in. So if you need to put an icon in some SBCs, icon swap suddenly becomes a lot more relevant because even if you get even if you go for like the baby icon pack, a medium, um, a prime icon pack, etc., they're going to be worth a lot more because they can still go into an icon SBC at some point. So that's going to make icon swaps a bit more of a grind. That's kind of a separate point. But yeah, I won't really ever be touching squad battles. Um, friendlies, the house rules they call it. I don't think they've really done too much more um, to that this year. Um, I'm a bit disappointed that co-op um, doesn't seem to be a part of friendlies at the moment. Uh, online, I don't think it says playing online on the new game, but yeah, go look at the game mode, see what there is. Foot champs probably won't open up for a couple of weeks. Apparently, it opens up in f about ten years. I think that might be nine, ten years, according to that on FIFA Twenty. Obviously, foot champs is done on FIFA Twenty. Um, you want to qualify for foot champs if you're a pretty hardcore player who's going to be playing a lot of foot. That's where the best rewards are. Division rivals is the way to do that. My advice rather than um, go straight into Division Rivals at the start of the game, would be to, if you're going to spend money on packs, open a few before just so you can get a decent start team. Because when you do Division Rivals, the five placement games you do at the start affect where you place, literally because they're called placement games. And if you place lower down, it's going to take a lot more effort to grind up the divisions to get to the better rewards. So if you can win as many games as possible in your first five placement games, it's going to save you a lot of pain and hassle and grinding your way up the divisions. And the good way to win more games is to have a better team. So if you are spending money, wait before you go into division rivals, I would say. Um, draft. I always like draft. If you're pretty decent at the game, I think draft's a very good way to uh, start off. So that's a mode I'll check out. I can't see it being too dissimilar to the last few years. It's a good way to learn the game. And it's a good... Um, way to earn some coins spend your thief points a bit better obviously it just takes a bit longer so check out the game mode that is something i would do at the start when you load up the game this is a very minor one and not something that necessarily is game changing or makes a huge difference to how the game plays but something i like to do at the start of the game i'm not even sure if my club is a section on the new fifa but there will be a section where you can change your kits your badge Stadium, obviously we've got the stadium um, customization options this year. But for me, one thing I like to do, I want to look good on the pitch. Just I enjoy playing in kits that I'm a fan of this year. I played for Roma. I'm not going to be representing them next year, but I represented Roma this year. I really liked Roma's kits anyway, so it wasn't an issue for me. Um, but next year, I'll be looking for some different kits I could use. Um, I liked a lot of the different custom badges they gave us. Cream Puff the Cat was a club legend. Uh, what else do we have? I like the Gladiator. The Prehistoric Pals are pretty good. At the moment, we've been using the Rainbow Pug. Obviously, these are things you can unlock through the objectives. They're kind of a little fun customization stuff for the club. But at the start, you might want to just pick kits from the teams you like or have a look through the transfer market for some kits that you like, badge that you want to represent. These are something you can just do at the start. Just It's very quick, five minutes, but just makes you look better on the pitch, gives your club a bit more identity, something you can do at the start. Pick your kits, pick your badge, and then over time you'll start to unlock more stadium development stuff, which can look pretty cool, I think. Okay, the fifth and final one that I'm going to talk about is if you are opening packs, and I'll probably talk a bit more in depth about this on the five things to do during EA Play, because it's even more relevant for that, but if you're opening packs, the best time to spend your money on FIFA points is at the start of the game. I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing a road to glory or putting a bit of money on packs yet. I'm not sure. I'm not trying to encourage people to spend money on packs. It's your money. You do what you want with it. But my advice is, because I always want to help you guys out, I want to give you guys the best advice. Is if you are going to spend money on this FIFA, the best time to do it is day one at the start. At the start of the game, players like Rashford, 
Usman Dembele. I mean, Rashford's an 85 this year, so he's actually going to be pretty good. Um, but the cheap meta players who are like, I say cheap, they're like maybe 10k after a couple of months. We're probably looking at players like Usman Dembele, Emre Chan looks good, uh, Ben Yedder, Diego Carlos. At the start of the game, these guys can go for anywhere from 50 to 150 grand. A couple of months in, these guys are not going to be worth a lot. And the pack weight on FIFA is disgustingly bad. Like, you're not going to get a top player generally. I spent two and a half grand last year to try to get a good team to compete with. And the best player I got was Eden Hazard. Yeah, he's good. But he was worth about 350 to 400k. And that was my best pull from two and a half grand. Most people aren't going to be spending anywhere near that. But I got lots of 20, 30, 40 grand players. And they all add up. But if you're going to spend, let's say, 200 quid and you spend it at the end of November... That 200 quid is far less likely to go as far. Plus, if you spend your coins at the beginning of the game, you're going to get more return over the year because you have a better team from the start, helps you get better rewards, and it just snowballs over the year. I see a lot of people spend a lot of money during team of the year. My personal advice is it's a waste because unless you pack one of them and the odds are low on that, then you're going to get pretty awful packs and you just don't get the coins for as long. So if you're spending your money, spend it early, that is my personal advice. Boys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I really appreciate the support you guys have shown me. I've been a full-time content creator for three years um, at the start of this FIFA. Going into my fourth full-time year, I wouldn't have been able to do this without you guys' support. I appreciate YouTube channel is dedicated to you guys, helping you guys improve at the game. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like, comment on the video. I'll see you boys tomorrow. Videos dropping daily, 6pm. FIFA 21 is almost here. It's time to get excited, boys.